Hi everyone, Shelby here, hope you're well. Welcome back to Shelby on Safari. Once again, I'm joined by my real life superhero, Maui. Today we will be looking at Shazam, also known as Captain Marvel, from the DC Comics. And the animal comparison, I went for a slightly different one today. While they are commonly kept as pets, and used in laboratories, they are critically endangered in the wild and an incredible animal, but their looks are deceiving, quite like Shazam. So let's get started. Created by Bill Parker and C.C. Beck, William Joseph, also known as Billy, Batson made his comic book debut in Wiz Comics number no. two on February 1st, 1940. Young Billy had quite the rough start to life. He was an orphan and his uncle who took him in decided to kick him out on the street and take all of his inheritance, not to mention separate him from his sister Mary. Wow, what a guy. So Billy became a newsie. Well, he sold newspapers to survive. One day when Billy was out selling them papes, a cloaked stranger led Billy to a weird part of the subway and onto a strange train that was covered in ancient ruins and hieroglyphic text. Speaking of such weird text and hieroglyphs and archeology, span actually his dad was an archeologist, Billy's dad, which is quite cool, which leads to some interesting ramifications later down the road, but spoilers. The word axolotl comes from the Aztecs who revered them. The axolotl, like Billy, is relatively young. They descended from the tiger salamander and have only been in central Mexico for about 10,000 years. Found only in two lakes in Mexico, they are quite rare to see in the wild. Another thing that's rarely seen is the Rock of Eternity, which is where the young Billy was on his magical mystery train too, with the cloaked stranger. At the Rock of Eternity, Billy meets the wizard Shazam. Billy learns that the wizard needs a new champion, one that is pure of heart to defend magic against the seven deadly sins of man. Billy argues that because of the modern times, it's not quite that simple. So the wizard instead sees the embers of good in him. So what's in a name? Well, everything if you're Billy. The wizard asks Billy to say his name, Shazam. And when that happens, if Billy says it with good intentions, he is granted the power of the elders and transformed to his greatest potential. So appearances can be deceiving. Don't judge a book by its cover. The same holds true for the axolotl. While axolotls may look similar to lizards and other reptiles, axolotls and salamanders are actually amphibians. One very cool difference between them is that reptiles, and actually us humans, have a four-chambered heart, whereas amphibians, like the axolotl, have only three. While Shazam may sound like a funny word, it's actually quite fun to say. It stands for something much greater. Shazam is an acronym for each of the powers bestowed upon the champion, in this case, Billy Batson, by the elders. S is for the wisdom of Solomon. Not only does he all of a sudden gain lots of wisdom and clairvoyance, oh no, he also is omnilingual. He can speak any language, including even speak to aliens, which is pretty cool. H stands for the strength of Hercules. Now, while Hercules is quite strong, there may be another superhero that comes to mind when you think of strength. Oh yes, yeah, Superman. In fact, they had an arm wrestle, but it was a stalemate. Personally, I'd rather hope Shazam could win that one. No offense, Superman. A is for the stamina of Atlas, the Titan who holds up the world. Now, this one's quite trippy because when Billy is in the Captain Marvel form, he doesn't need to eat, 
and he doesn't need to sleep, which to me sounds amazing. Although I love food, but not being able to sleep and just carry on doing stuff, that would be incredible. And he doesn't fatigue. How crazy is that? Z stands for the power of Zeus. And when you get this power, it just doesn't mean power. It means lightning. It means healing. And it means resistance against most magic. The axolotl does have connections to a deity, Shodol, the god of death, fire, destruction, but also lightning. So hey, but axolotls can't shoot lightning out like Shazam can, just to clarify. So with the power of Zeus, Shazam can also heal quite rapidly. Axolotls also have that superpower. They can regenerate their limbs, their lungs, their jaw, even parts of their brain, which is one of the reasons why they are commonly kept in laboratories to try to figure out how exactly they do this and apply it to human science. The second A in Shazam stands for the courage of Achilles. This gives him inner courage and confidence. M stands for the speed of Mercury. Now Shazam can rival the DC speedster, the Flash. However, both are very considerate and don't often go above Mach 10 because they're aware of their surroundings and they don't want to hurt other people, which is really cool. So thanks guys. Shazam can also defy gravity and he can fly. The axolotls also have quite some impressive speeds. They can move up to 10 miles per hour under the water. <laughs> we move on to the attributes, if you haven't already, click below to subscribe to the channel because you're not going to want to miss the crazy adventures that we get up to every week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. When Billy says the word Shazam, he is transformed into an adult's body that has all of the powers we've just gone over. However, the axolotl can't transform, can it? Well, they differ from most salamanders in the fact that they predominantly stay in the water. In very rare cases, the axolotl can actually progress to maturity and emerge on land. Axolotls are very unusual for salamanders, just like Billy is very unusual compared to most kids. Axolotls are neotenic meaning that they keep most of the juvenile characteristics into adulthood, including their tadpole-like dorsal fin and their feathery external gills. Here's me being an axolotl. However, when Billy matures into the champion, he actually retains his boy-like state. One of the things in the movie that I love and I think was absolutely perfect casting was the ever amazing Zachary Levi as Shazam. He perfectly portrayed a kid at heart in an adult's body. It was fabulous and really embodies the heart of this character. He is optimistic, especially against some of the other Justice League characters that he comes across in the comics. You know, the grim, dark Batman. But here's Billy Batson being full of hope and, you know, fighting to give Lex Luthor a second chance when no one else would. Billy is often smiling and full of optimism and hope. And the axolotl may look like they're also smiling. They have that funny grin look expression on their face. Their mouth is quite important though, because that's how they eat. They use a suction like, like a little hoover to pick up crustaceans, crabs, fish, mollusks, and gobble them up. Sometimes they can even accidentally pick up gravel, but that's okay because then the gravel stays in their stomach and kind of breaks up their food for them, which is quite cool. Shazam has been a part of the Justice League of America and the Justice Society of America. And yes, if you've seen the previous videos, Batman is still up there, always watching. Always watching, Wazowski. That was a terrible Roz impression. I'm sorry, Batman does not sound like that and neither does Roz. But his greatest team is of course, his own family, known as the Marvel family or the Shazam family, whichever way you wanna say it, their family. And they're together, which is fabulous. In the current DC comics, as well as the movie, Billy's 
magical family is comprised of his foster siblings, including Mary, Freddie, Pedro, Eugene, and Darla. And just like Billy, when they say Shazam, they get a bit of power as well. And they too stay kids, but in the body of adults, which is quite fun, especially when Darla beats up on some of the seven deadly sins. She's so cute. An Easter egg that made its way throughout the Shazam movie was that of a tiger. But why a tiger, you may ask? Well, it represented Talkie Tawny. Talkie Tawny is an anthropomorphic tiger, one who longs to be a part of the human world and is a frequent ally of Billy and the Marvel family. Speaking of tigers, the axolotl is part of a group of mole salamanders, which includes their closest relative, the tiger salamander. <laughs> superheroes who have been around since the 1940s, you can imagine their list of enemies is quite long. At the top of every list of Shazam's villains should be Black Adam. He was the original champion of the wizard. And when I say original, I mean original. He's been around a while. He was born to the Egyptian pharaoh Ramses II. Because he was the original champion to the wizard, his powers match that and sometimes can exceed that of our buddy Shazam. However, while Shazam's powers are Greek in origin, Black Adam's are Egyptian. One thing that makes Black Adam exceptionally dangerous is his experience. He's been around for hundreds of years and really knows the extent of his powers, what he can get away with, what he can't do, what he can do, all of these different things. Whereas Billy, he's still a kid. He hasn't had the powers of Shazam for a really long time in comparison, and he's still learning. I don't wanna to give too much away about Black Adam because the mythos and the backstory is pretty incredible and pretty gnarly. And I'll leave the links to some in the description below. But don't read too much because there's an incredible movie on its way starring The Rock. That's right, Maui, your man, Dwayne Johnson, is going to be Black Adam. It's going to be incredible. I am so excited to see this movie. The Shazam movie had quite a few Easter eggs in it. Had a bit of Talkie Tawny in there, the tiger, but also Mr. Mind. Oh yeah, this malicious worm made his way into, well, out of the enclosure in the Shazam movie. Now, you might be thinking, if you're not familiar with Mr. Mine, how powerful can a worm be? Well, if you are a mind-controlling worm from the planet Venus, you're pretty powerful. Mr. Mine is the sole survivor of this crazy alien race from Venus, not only can he mind control, but he has telepathy and also image projecting powers. He's a formidable foe to be sure. Not all worms have mind control capabilities. The axolotl loves to eat worms. That's it. Billy should get a responsibly sourced pet axolotl and then be like, hey, Mr. Mind, Come check out my new pet. And then the axolotl hoovers him up. Problem solved. <sighs> You're welcome, DC. The natural threats of the axolotl include predatory birds like herons. However, the biggest threat to axolotls is habitat destruction. They are found exclusively in the lake complex of Xochimilco, which leads to some problems because there's a lot of humans in the area and there's competition for fresh water. The draining and contamination of much of the lake of Ochimilco has produced quite a few problems for wild axolotls. Their numbers are dwindling. In fact, they are listed as critically endangered on the IUC and Red List. Axolotls are also very popular in the aquarium trade. That's why it's really important if you're considering getting an axolotl as a pet, make sure it is responsibly sourced and not from the wild. However, not all hope is lost. Like Billy, 
we should use our optimism and also our power to make a difference for axolotls. Researchers out in the field are doing just this by building shelters for them, using rocks and reeds to help filter water that is being pumped back into their environment. Other conservation work is being done as well, and I encourage you to check out the links in the description below. Yeah? Okay. Oh, he's awake, kind of. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining Maui and I today on our super heroic adventure. If you haven't already, click to subscribe, and don't forget to leave a thumbs up for the axolotls and Shazam. We'll see you next time. Bye!